Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. 观众朋友们，大家好。You can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth can come to the United States and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, a bi-weekly talk show program featuring the lives of immigrants. Knowledge, diversity, and inclusion, created by Think Tank Hawaii and the Kingsfield Law Office, we invite renowned immigrants to discuss their life stories, immigration adventures, and their contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is our good friend, Miss Ying Chen. Ying Chen has a very interesting biography. She started her education and work as an engineer. And then later, she became an artist. Miss Ying graduated from the University of Science and Technology in China, which is very prestigious technology university in China. She came to the United States, receive a master degree in computer science, and then she worked for Motorola for a, as an engineer and a program manager. After working in the United States for over ten years, she returned to China. To study art at the Central Academy of Fine Arts. In the past ten years, she has translated one of the most important art history books, Art Since 1940, and she has experimented and created art shows on various media. Today, we are very honored and very pleased to have Ying to join us. Welcome. Hello, Ying Hao. Ah,、uh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. We, I, I found your、uh, career path is very interesting because、uh, I found some similarities between our、uh, career choices. I started as an artist, and it,、uh, and、uh, now is turned to a lawyer. And you started as scientist, now you're an artist.、Uh, when my friends and colleagues ask me why you change from、uh, art to law. My standard answer is: I'd love to talk about art with lawyers, and I would love to talk about law with artists. And what's your answer when people ask you why you change from science to art? I would say there is no barrier between science and art. Art is a form of science, and science is the form of art. I studied art because it can、uh, because of society. At that time, when I went to college, that was in late 1980. China is opening up, is doing its reforming, and the economic is growing. Everybody wants to study science because that's something that can get you a good job, right? So I did. I spent five years in University of Science and Technology of China. I studied basically. I studied polymer physics. I have learned many ways to do experiments, to how to get results, to how to get materials, to how to get a project done. I don't think there is any barrier because I use them. When later on, when I turned my focus to art, well, actually that was not totally the story. the The seed of art was planted in me when I was very little. My father is economic. A scholar, and he's also a calligrapher and artist. When I was very little, he taught me Chinese painting. He not just by ten,、uh, teaching me how to paint, he actually showed me how to see the world as a picture, and how to observe the world as an artist. So those way of thinking and philosophies has been always in my heart. So it, it never changed. So when the chance, when the opportunity came. I would go to the art school and learn art. Amazing story! Thank you so much for sharing.、Uh, when I became a lawyer, that、uh, when I went to law school, I always hear this、uh, expression that law is a science. And the more I study, the more I practice, the more I agree. And、uh, obviously, my art education didn't work out, but I'm very、uh, pleased to see that you. Uh, are becoming a bridge between science and art. 
you and I get to know each other because of a mutual friend, Professor Jonathan Fenberg, and my academic mentor, my friend for 22 years, and you happen to be his key translator of his seminal book, Art Since 1940. And how did you came across this book? And why did you decide to translate this book? It's a very, very big book. I, when I was a graduate student under Professor Feinberg, I translated it, but never published it. I can hardly imagine the, the, the tremendous work you put into to get translated. And I read your translation, and I have to say it's very faithful, very accurate, and it's quite elegant as well. Thank you so much for the encouragement. I feel so lucky to have the opportunity to translate such a great book. Uh, as the book name suggests, it encompasses work, um, encompasses the work of art history from 1940 and forward. It's just, it just like when the first time I read the English version of it, I love it. I was in art school, um, just as you described in the beginning. I went to the um, Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing in 19, oh, actually 2012. Mm -hmm. And this book uh, project came to me um, in 2013. I was studying uh, art history, including modern art history. So uh, the, the very reasoning of doing this project is because I want to learn. People once said, if you want to read a book, if you want to really want to learn something, translate it. Because it's translating part is a very slow process. You're not just translating the context. You're actually writing it in a way that people can understand in your culture, in your language, but not uh, betraying the original author's uh, purpose of writing it. So that's become a challenge for me. But again, as I mentioned, I want to learn in the very beginning to uh, the modern arts as part of my uh, learning process. So we start translated. It's a 600 page book. Yes, it's a big book. It took us a year to translate it. And I even joked about it. Like every one hour, I, I calculated the characters I translated, including editing in the later, as about 300 characters an hour. That's how, how slow that was. I'm glad it turned out right, right, and people love it. Another thing about this book is because it's not just one um, general art history book, it's a book for academic to read. That plays some challenge for me. And I love challenge. So we were trained as scientists, right? We explore new things, so we're trying to solve problems. So that's also a, a, a reason uh, drive me to translate this book, even it's a non journey I'm glad it's published. I'm glad Dr. Feinberg liked it and you like it as well. And as a matter of fact, we, uh, that become a bridge between Dr. Feinberg and me and you. Otherwise, we won't have this talk today. Yes, I, I, I believe that everything happened for a reason. And I really appreciate you translating this book with scientific precision. Because Professor Feinberg has this the very strong uh, psychoanalysis sociology and a philosophical background. He, his language is very sophisticated. It's not like uh, Arthur Dental or uh, some other art historian has been translating to Chinese, uh, a simple and straightforward. But Professor Fenberg, every sentence, every paragraph carries a lot of weight of philosophy, psychoanalysis, and just uh, sociology. So I really appreciate your efforts. Now, you didn't stop as an art translator. You studied art, you translated art history, but you also practice art. And you, you draw and you give lectures on art. Tell us a little bit more about your career change after you become some kind of full-time independent artist and art researcher, and what your uh, uh, schedule look like. My, my schedule, okay. First of all, why and when I changed my career. Um, as you mentioned, I studied under science and the computer science. 
uh, in US. After I graduated from a uh, recent state university, after I got my computer science degree, I went to Los. I went Los to Chicago. I worked for Motorola for over 10 years as an engineer and uh, program manager. And then in 19, uh, actually 2011, I decided to go back to China. Uh, my husband has started a business there and uh, we decided to spend some time in China, in Beijing. So life is an ever changing course. After um, living in the US for so many years, I, don't, I didn't see anything strange to me. And China is changed at that time. And uh, I continue working for Motorola in Beijing for about a year. Um, and then our section at Motorola, our section was acquired by Google. That was a turning point for me. I have to make the decision, do I continue to work for a tech company or I can spend time to pursue what my childhood dreams. So my childhood dream was to study uh, art in art school, right? And the Central Academy of Fine Arts was so close to where I live. I feel just like it's natural, it's a gut given, you know, I, I, it is so natural choice for me to spend full time learning. So I spent two years and uh, in school learning art history and uh, art market. And so that when I started my journey uh, in art. Um, and that, and, and, and we talk about the very beginning when I was a child, the, uh, this art seed was planted by my father. So he actually, my, my father passed away two years ago. Uh, he, he taught me those uh, basic skills, how to draw, how to write, how to observe the world. Those things never faded away. Even I, my life changed from China to US, uh, to US and back to China. It's always there. So whenever the uh, soil is there, when the temperature is right, when the environment is good for me to grow, I start growing. I start exploring my uh, interest in art. Thank you very much. I noticed, you know, uh, some of, you, of your artwork is very playful, but I'm not sure I can say that the last picture, I, uh, last uh, drawing I saw, the PCR, PCR testing, COVID PCR testing was playful. Uh, it was uh, uh, completed in 2021, I believe. And could you tell us a little bit about this drawing? The, piece, uh, the hospital drawing? Yeah, this one. This oh, one. that one. When okay. they're doing the PCR testing. The PCR, it's talking about the hospital, right? Oh, yes, yes. It's yes, the, the PCR, PCR testing. That was, uh, uh, yeah, that's a scene from a hospital series. So in, um, during the heyday of COVID-19 in 2020, my father was, really, really sick. He had a very bad stroke seven years ago and left him no his ability to speak and other you know, bad symptoms. So it was very difficult for everyone um, in the hospital and outside the hospital. I spent about six months accompanying him in the hospital during his treatment and his last days there. Wow. So that picture, a spectacular picture actually was my husband. He came to, he was still in Beijing. I was in Chengdu, um, my hometown, you know, taking care of my father. So my husband came, he couldn't see, see the, you know, his father, you know, he had to take blood testing. So that was like a regular thing. You see that every day, every moment in the hospital, everybody has to do that. So I just figured out, you know, I, I, when I was wandering around in the hospital, talking to doctors, nurses, caregivers, and observing things, that was the very common thing I want to capture. Well, you did a very good job, I have to say. And But uh, that drawing somehow made me feel very sad. Uh, we, we, we don't know where this pandemic will end in China. It, it ended in the United States. The president and Dr. Fauci already announced. And, but uh, when uh, or how it will end in other parts of the world, we have we have no idea. But now change gears to a more a lightly you know, a subject. And uh, you have exhibited your artwork in California. And uh, did you also exhibit your artwork in China or other places? I did. I exhibited in China, not in a big way. Uh, it just, that was still during my process of making the art. 
Mm -hmm. uh, when I came to California at the end of last year, and uh, I started trying to, because I have this um, um, 400 plus jingle leaf joints and uh, the um, about 30 series. So as I show into the uh, local library in California, in Palo Alto, and they love it. They said, why don't you, you know, uh, exhibit here? And I also have my friend and who is my, also my cl um, classmate. She reserved a, a, a month of exhibition. And she said, well, why don't you just exhibit, exhibit yours? And so we, we love it. So actually the uh, one month exhibition extended to two months. So that's the first one. I call it, uh, it's a splendor of leaf. So this theory, uh, I started seven years ago. Um, seven years ago when I was, uh, I think I was waiting for my son in his school. Uh, it was a fall season and the jingle tree leaves um, turning yellow and that shape, the shape of fine reminded me of the Chinese painting, Yara. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have this um, uh, fan painting from very, very long time. So, um, and also for me, I grew up in a city uh, full of jingle trees. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very familiar with this plant. So I started using this medium, jingle leaves as a medium to create my art. It becomes very natural and very natural. And I, as a, well, as a science student, I experimented in the very beginning and trying different pigments, different uh, way of mixing colors. And eventually I find a way to, to take the white steam ever in my mind. So, so I had this in, with me. So I uh, expect about two months and they love it. And the, then the war broke, the Ukraine war broke. Mm. So I continue working on Jingle Leaf. Um, I think in March this year. Uh, after I finish, and they wanted to expand it more. So they started putting on the wall, actually in the library in April. So I thought it's going to be one month, but after six months until now, they're still uh, exhibiting them. I want to ask why, so no, we don't want to turn, um, take it off until the piece is here, until you know, the war is over. The reason for that because the topic mm. uh, of my newest, it's about the one piece. Stunning, stunningly beautiful. And uh, it, it, you have a very unique sense, uh, sensitivity to color and the composition. And I, uh, as an art historian myself, I, I really appreciate that. But I also feel a strong sense of Chinese-ness in your artwork. And your artwork is obviously, is modern, it's very contemporary, and it's very relevant to the current affair. But I still feel there's a very strong cultural implication. You and I belong to the same generation, the so-called Generation 89. You went to university in the late 1980s. Mm -hmm. I was in high school in late 1980s and went to college right after 1989. So both you and I grew up or educated in the cultural renaissance of 1980s. And you went to one of the best universities in China, the China's MIT, the University of Science and Technology. And uh, one of your university leaders is a universally revered scholar and a public speaker, and which I deeply respect as well. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your, the value system although the cultural background behind your artwork. When you paint, when you draw, what identity do you assume? Because you create most of your artwork in the United States as a Chinese American artist. Mm -hmm. Very good question. Um, it's a freedom of, to express yourself. Um, when I draw, I feel, um, a big connection between me and the outside the world. Mm -hmm. It is the way, uh, as Dr. Feinberg said in his book, Art Since 1940, he mentioned about art is a way of thinking. I truly agree with him. And uh, you feel much more and more and more agree with him when you grow up and when you start to practice art. I did, you, I think I, the, the, the actual work I did, and you think I did in America, it's a non-score of a winter scene. 
I did that when I was working for Motorola. I live in Chicago for over 10 years and uh, I endure its coldness. It was really, really cold during winter. So the winter is very long. I, last thing, like, uh, I feel like six months, at least like three to four months of slow covering ground. I drove every day to work and I saw this white world around me. I was like, gosh, you know, I, I never saw that in Chengdu, that the southern city. That's where I grew up. We don't see, you know, we don't see much slow. So I saw this slow and think, well, my, my artist thinking come out and said, oh, okay, how can I express myself? Of course, pen and paper. So, and that's the best way to, to depict the snow is using paint and brush. That's just like, we, we did that in Chinese painting as well. And how do you de depict such a long area of paint, uh, white world, long scroll? And the Chinese hand store of long scroll is a way to depict scenic landscape in a very grand way. And when we see this outside world in my hand, on the, on the paper scroll, and you actually see this scenic view, uh, view uh, just coming out, you know, uh, when you're scrolling around, you know, when you're rolling up the paper, rolling up the scroll. So that was like a way, that's the art form actually came from China. Right. When I was little, I, I saw so many of them. So they just kind of become natural way for me to, to draw like that way. So as a matter of fact, my father, when he first time saw my winter scene drawing, he would say, oh, this is so much like Chinese and you are still a Chinese artist. Even though you are drawing uh, Chicago, you are drawing you know, church, you are drawing people's skin. Uh, it's not, uh, not Chinese in the traditional, traditional uh, activities and scenic. But you, you are drawing the world using very much Chinese technique. Yeah. <laughs> I totally agree. And uh, uh, some of your drawings remind me of Qiang Yi, Qiang Yi, the mm -hmm. silent traveler who uh, draw the, the, the landscape of San Francisco, uh, of Boston, and from a Chinese American perspective. It's very uh, illuminating. Anyway, we are running short of time, but I do want to ask you uh, two questions to end our interview. The question one is, who is your favorite artist? I think that might be too many, but anyway, I do want to <laughs> ask you about this. And the second question is, we ask all of our distinguished guests, and uh, if you were give some advice to yourself in the uh, 20s, time travel permitted, what would you say to yourself in the 20s? Who's my favorite artist? I won't need to be hesitant. That's my father. He gave me eyes. Wonderful. He gave me eyes to see the world as picture frames as, and also mm -hmm. to see inside me how to express myself, how to, you know, and what's the art become a bridge be, you know, between me and him and you and many others. And between our cultures, how come my work of Jingoni, that's very oriental, can be the, as an exhibition here. And it's still um, many people understand and enjoy. Um, in my twenties, what, what I think, I want to be more confident. Mm -hmm. I was actually, as a girl, not sure about myself, not confident of my look, uh, my how good I could be, how much I, time I should spend studying. I'm not as good as other, you know, my fellow classmates. As you mentioned, my university uh, is quite hard to get in. Uh, even I was a top student in my class back in high school. When I get to my university, I was totally floored because you can see those people, you know, coming from other provinces. They're just so good at it and studying uh, science. I was not a very good student. I tried and tried very hard. I wish I could be more confident for what I could, my own interest and focus. I might be, you know, um, open up for more opportunities and then learning my inside coding earlier. Thank you so much. Well, what, what a pleasure to have you on the show and talk about the science and art. And our conversation really reminded me my favorite historian, Yun Shi, Professor Yun Shi, mm -hmm. said, where I, were, I am is China. And China is always with us, 
with us Chinese Americans. And if in the United States, in Europe, and somehow we feel even closer to China. And this cultural identity is distinct and is deeply embedded in our cultural gene and in every artwork we create. And I appreciate your taking the time to be on the show. I learned a lot. I really appreciate Professor Jonathan Fanberg introduced us together and we can continue to explore collaborative opportunities. And I'm pleased to report Professor Fenberg will be on the show next month. Oh. And uh, he is, uh, I believe, third generation or the fourth generation. But uh, we are uh, very excited to, him, to have him on the show as well. Again, thank you so much for your time, Ying. And congratulations to your art work and uh, your public lectures in art. And uh, be well, keep up your good artwork and keep in touch. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.